Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here with Micah. Did I say that right? You said it right. Thank you. Yes. I got inside Sam. She's taking some photos. This helps when you're traveling with a photographer that's your slash assistant. It's really nice, actually. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to tour uh, Micah's 2020 Ford Transit that you self-built. That's right. 100%? 100%. DIY. Yeah. But we're going to get into all of that right now. Here we go! Michael, what's up, man? Yeah, how are you doing? Well, what do you have? What kind of van is this? Oh, this is a 2020 uh, Transit all-wheel drive, and it's the uh, extended 148 wheelbase. When nothing's in it, I think it's like 6'8 six, or 6'9. Six, six, Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Before we step in, what, what, how tall are you? Because you're taller than me. I'm 6'. You're 6'. So just for everybody for reference, when he does step in, it's, it's ridiculous. How long did it take you to build this? Uh, so I got it, I think, uh, January of 2020, and then um, I was ready to go for a road trip that we did, like 8,000 miles, um, August. August. So about eight months. Very impressive yeah. for all the work that you did. Why don't we step in and you can kind of walk me through everything. Sure. If you want to start in the front, that would be great. Sounds good. You went with a full-on, fully loaded 2020 Transit. Yeah, so it's got all the features. It's got radar cruise. It's got... Um, radar cruise? Yeah, so you can set the radar and it'll follow the car in front of you so you don't have to vary and brake or anything like that. So it'll go all the way to stop. So if the car in front of you stops, it'll stop the van completely. Does this have like the autopilot too? I know it's not the... It's yeah. not like a full autopilot, but it'll keep you in your lane. It'll steer for you. <laughs> it, really? If things in the road, it'll actually kind of steer around it a little bit. I see that your rear view, not, rear view mirror, is that what they're called? The rear, yeah, the rear view yeah. mirror is, is not a rear view mirror. What the heck is that? So this is like an Android unit that I found, um, came from China. I think I got it on AliExpress or something yeah. like that. And it's 300 bucks, but it runs Android and actually has a 4G modem in there too. So you can put a SIM card in it and not even have Wi-Fi or anything to power it. So you can power it with that. It runs Waze, so I got Waze on there. So it has a dash cam on the front that's always recording and uh, it has an SD card in there, and I think it also goes up to the cloud. So there's an app for it. You can view the front camera from anywhere. Okay. Uh, any other cool features that you got in the van itself? Because you got it fully freaking loaded. Yeah, um, the uh, blind spot monitoring is really good. Just okay. with something that you don't have windows on the side and it's so long and big, like that alone. I was looking at a 2019 or looking at a used like 2015, that kind of thing. Yeah. I was sold on the 2020 just for that alone. Like I need blind spot And monitor. did we say this was all wheel drive? It I is, think we did, yeah, yeah. but it is all wheel drive. And it's the EcoBoost motor, so it actually has a fair amount of power. Like The two swivels, is that factory or aftermarket? This is aftermarket. There's a guy like Sprinter Swivels or something like that. They're super cheap. He's actually like right here in Seattle area. So okay. it's like 20 minutes from here. I messaged him and went and bought him. And... Yeah, and they don't rattle. So uh, that's what I was really worried about. I heard some of them are really rattly and that kind of thing. And like they don't rattle like they're just perfect it has like a big teflon block in there nice where it spins also what's under the seat if you can't see that vent down there guys is this is a wabasto heater and it's the air top uh 2000 stc or yeah something like that the one that's like in russia or something like that the heaters for you or something like that. but this is fully four season equipped Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got the heater there, and then actually put together uh, air conditioning. Which we'll get to. <laughs> I will get to. I'm not. We're not going to rush over there right away. Talk to me a little bit about your ceiling kind of design here, because I really actually like it a lot. And then I'll switch places with you. Yeah, I really wanted to keep the weight down and just keep everything as simple as possible with the ribs here instead of building on top of that and then building down and then wood and everything that's going to creak and all that kind of thing. That's mm -hmm. what I was really worried about extra noises while we're on the road. I found these foamed PVC panels, wedged them in between these ribs. So the panel itself goes, you know, about that much more on either side there. What I did was shoshugi bond on the cedar. For anybody that doesn't know what that is, it's a, it's an old, uh, I believe Japanese method of burning wood. Yeah, so I and then using a wire brush, right? Big yeah. uh, propane torch thing <laughs> nice. they use for weeds, you know, yeah. that kind of thing, or melting snow. Yeah. So I used that and just blasted it, <laughs> and then you use a brush and you kind of brush it like that, and then it kind of makes this really cool. So this was like a red cedar originally. Oh, okay. And then it, it looks like this, and that actually will treat it, so you don't need to stain it, you don't need to paint it, you don't sure. need to do anything. And it's... For people that can't see, this is actually has a contour to it. Yeah, so how did you bend curve. that? Yeah. So. Um, I got some longer bolts here and I looked on some ship building forms and like how do they do those extreme bends and they were saying that it's actually more so heat so yeah. I used a heat gun and a wrench and I just really it as I was going and it would bend up so and just a heat gun not the torch that you bought yeah yeah just the heat gun so I was in here with a heat gun did you have a glove on because that would get hot on your hand I, would uh, say. No, I think I just burnt myself <laughs> <laughs> nice nice dude we'll go to this guy right here oh, which is cool, your yeah. bench and then I'll switch 
Yeah, I wanted to keep everything close to the battery because the battery's under the seat on these. The battery, like the van battery itself. Yeah. Not the battery for the house batteries. Because I wanted to do as much alternating charger as I could. So I had that in here and um, I got all my battery stuff under here. I've actually built the battery for it, which is a 560 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate. You built your own battery. Yeah. Which is a 560 amp hour. Yep. That is a massive battery for a single person to build. Yeah, and it's pretty small. I know it's pretty small because <laughs> you showed it to me, but how the heck did you fit 560? Is that what you said? Yeah. 500, how'd you fit 560 amps in that little guy? So they're Eve cells and they're about like this and about that tall. Okay. And I just stacked uh, eight of them together there and wired it up, and made a BMS for it and set everything up. And, and it's funny you said it made a BMS system for it. Number one thing that I know not to build a battery is because of BMS. Yes. That's so how important. I was gonna say how important is a BMS and how the heck do you know how to do that? Uh, it's super important. Uh, that you need low uh, temperature disconnect because if you try to charge in freezing temperatures, you'll ruin your batteries. So okay. like even if you don't really realize that the battery's a little bit below freezing, that kind of thing, and you try to charge, put it in there without a BMS, you'll ruin it. And a BMS is battery management software or system? Battery system, system. Yeah. okay. So what you're doing is all those cells are tied together to make one big battery. Mm -hmm. And you need to make sure those cells stay balanced because okay. each one is three point, you know, whatever volts where it's at. Right. According to the charge. And My point is, is you have this background. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You have a background in tech. Everybody, if you know this stuff, then by all means do it. But for those who don't know this tech, please don't try to attempt this. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do because you built like a you built your own motherboard. Oh yeah, I mean I built the battery system, tied everything together, put the BMS on top. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Find it also interesting that right there is your only window. Only window. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't go full south, but you went. Uh, you have enough lighting. It's beautiful. I like it. All right, you want to switch sides with me? Yeah, yeah. Really nice countertops, by the way. I wanted to mention that before. Yeah, this is acacia wood. Acacia. Acacia. Oh yeah, okay, sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, expensive wood. I just you said the name, and now I know. The weird thing is, I found it at Home Depot for a huge slab. I think it was oh, so it's yeah. this one and this one, and it was actually a little bit wider, so I cut it down three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, they just started selling these. I want to say uh, mid last year. Yeah, that's what I yeah. got. Yeah. Yeah. So they're the really the the. And I thought it was just beautiful, you know, like for that price, this wood. You, you can't just... beat it. And then your floor yeah. is different than everybody else's. Yeah, I did. A lot of people use fake wood, and I just try to think of the future of like, that's probably not going to be cool forever, like, you know. I try to think of the future. <laughs> if I'm going to have wood, I want it to be real wood. So okay, no fair enough. So it's a vinyl sheet, and it's from Lowe's, and it was like one of the cheapest ones they sell. So. <laughs> I mean, it looks cool. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I it's different. You know? Yeah, I like the hexagon. Sure, why not? Yeah. And then you have these upper cabinets that are aluminum framed. Yeah, so these are open. Aluminum. Yeah, I think it's inch and a half aluminum tubing. When I was starting this, I didn't really know what I was gonna do with cabinetry and that kind of thing. And um, a motorcycle guy, friend of mine who built my motorcycle said, hey, you know, I'd really be interested in doing that. I bought the tubing and he welded everything together. Wow, that was nice of him. Yeah. I mean, did you pay him? I paid him. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, very nice, that was, that's nice of you. So did he do all the welding uh, for all the cabinetry? Yeah, he did everything. So I just kind of gave him a rough idea and this is what he came up with and he kind of changed some things that I'm gonna make it this way instead of the way that <laughs> Very nice. What's interesting, it's a very simple layout you got going on here. Yeah. Uh, do you have a toilet and a shower, which is a lot of people are worried about and things yeah. like that. So I don't have a shower, but the weird, the weird thing is this actually comes out and it comes out about three feet. So if you really wanted to, you could go right outside the door here and this is... It works just fine. Shower off and portable toilet. I think it's, um, I don't know which brand it is or what. Yeah, but. the portable toilet, man. That's all you need, guys. Come on. It's got a bag and if it was an emergency situation, you know, you're covered. Your backsplash actually aesthetically fits your entire van. Yeah. Uh, stainless steel. It's stainless steel. Very nice. I had the um, the wood up here, and I was looking at a lot of people who use those like fake tiles and that kind of thing. And yeah, I did, man. Come on, don't don't make fun of me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I bought them on Amazon. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna put these things up, and they were like foam. And the I'm fake like, tile. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm gonna ruin these things, man. Yeah. Like, I don't want to put these up. I wanted everything to be kind of like hard wearing, you know, that kind of thing. Because where... you're gonna be rough with this. Yeah. 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 I like it. And we have two dogs, and you know, it's gonna get messy in here and rough and that kind of thing. How big is the bed? Oh, okay, yeah, so this is a full, and it goes the full distance here, so in between here is um, six foot, six foot three. Okay. And I actually built this out. There could have been a little bit more room, but I just wanted some insulation and something that was soft behind here. So, nice. So I built these out. What is that? Is that like a leather? 
Yeah, so this is like a fake leather that's like a, they make marine seats. Yeah. So if you had a oh. boat or that kind of thing, they sell this where you can make your seating and benches and that kind of thing. And I'm gonna ask actually Sam to do us a favor. Do you mind shutting those back doors so we can kind yeah, of see absolutely. what that looks like? Yeah. Thank you, Sam. And while Sam's doing that, can you talk to me about this thing oh, down yeah. here? And then we're gonna talk about what's up there, which is kind of cool. Absolutely. But you built your own one of these. Yeah. I was super impressed on how you did all this. <laughs> So I wanted a cruise in comfort after our 8,000 mile road trip in the summer. It can get unbearable to stay in, okay. in the van. So wait a minute, you did a road trip before you put that in? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it was during the summer. But after that, I was like, I gotta do something. I was wanting the cruise in comfort. It seemed like the best option. It seems like what everybody's using that actually works well. Like the roof mounted ones, I have so much solar on the top that I can't really fit one up there. And well, how much solar do you have now that you're there? Yeah, 600 watts. Okay, you have a lot of panels. Yep. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, no, not at all. So you wanted the Cruise and Comfort. This is obviously not a Cruise and Comfort. No. So I was cruising on eBay. Okay. And I saw the VES system, which is their, one of the ones that they sell that's a split system that they make for all kinds of different applications. Like people use them in big rig trucks and yep. you know, all that kind of thing. Uh, I found just the compressor of that. So that obviously is not going to do anything, but it was 500 bucks. Okay. And I said, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> so you bought just the compressor yeah. and you built your own mini split, I guess. Yeah, I said, I'll figure out, you know, how all this works. I'll right. figure out what type of tubing I need. I'll figure out, you know, how to do everything. Right. And I bought the dryer bottle and I bought this uh, blower unit, which is one that they use in buses and all that kind of thing. It's actually made here in Seattle. So the compressor that we're talking about is the one that's underneath the van. That's the one you bought? Uh, or it's actually right here. Oh, okay. So I have it mounted under the bed. So that's like the Oh yeah, top. the little yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, you know, about like this. I think it's ten by ten. The the double fan uh, yeah. underneath. Yeah, so I actually did a different um condenser. Yeah. Um the one from Cruising Comfort's rather thin mm -hmm. and you have to mount it at an angle. Really didn't want it to be at an angle because it's gonna be lower. Mm -hmm. I was just afraid of it catching on something or that kind of thing. One that's made by Pro Air and it has Yeah, yeah. It, it can be mounted fully flat made to be undermounted completely under or on the roof so you frankensteined <laughs> an air conditioning unit yeah okay i get it now i get it and it works well i mean this is like the inside blower unit this is what would be uh like a little box or something like that that the cruising comfort sells but i bought this big thing instead Just what do you think the total price of the all the all the air conditioning components put together Oh, I saved a lot. I think I spent 1500 bucks all together. All together? Yeah. And then how long did it take you to figure out? I was on it for like <laughs> a week and a half. Really? <laughs> yeah. Again, he has a tech background. He probably figured it out a lot quicker than most of us could. Definitely faster than I could. Yeah. And then you have this really cool TV behind you. Yeah, I got a Samsung QLED TV back here. Which, and... by the way, it's one of my favorite shows. Uh, your, your show in Netflix right now. Oh, Thank yeah, you. It's on the Netflix app. <laughs> it's on the Netflix app, yeah. You're connected to Wi Fi right now if you're showing Netflix. I am. So, how the heck are you connected to Wi Fi and all that good stuff? <laughs> so, I have a Cradle Point router, and you can go use all different sorts of mobile routers, but you know, this is one of the better ones. I was going to say, why'd you go with Cradle Point? Um, just, it just seemed like the most robust one that, it that is. they make. You yeah. know? So I went with that. I was able to use two different cell phone plans in it. So I have an AT&T plan in there and a Verizon plan as well. Okay. <laughs> just because yeah. I don't want to ever not have internet. Okay. That's how important it is to me, you know? So. And what was the, you, yeah, go ahead, continue. It has both modems activated all the time and it'll load balance between the two of them. Do you mind sharing? I asked you all oh, these, all, yeah. uh, what do you pay monthly on these plans? Uh, so the AT&T plan's an uh, iPad plan. It's supposed to be the SIM cards in an iPad. Okay. You put it in there, no problem. I mean, it probably works, and yeah. And it's 20 bucks a month for That's unlimited. That's crazy. And you do not get throttled. You can use a terabyte in a month and you'll be fine. And same thing. Thing with the Verizon and the Verizon one's visible and that's like their are we allowed to talk about this one <laughs> it's a prepaid network okay and you get it you set it up in a phone and then you can put the sim card in anything are you kidding me yeah oh so wow I got a friend that has like an overland uh, Tacoma and he set it up in a little Verizon jetpack and it works and he's been using it and why am I not doing this <laughs> appreciate that that yeah, just absolutely. helped me out a lot because I have a jetpack that I get throttled before we move to the back I can see a little bit uh un un uncovered metal right there yeah. uh of the frame of the van you yeah. used uh what insulation in there so I'm using Havelock wool and then the that's just everywhere within the walls and that kind of thing and then uh, in the ceiling I have uh poly iso and then I have wool on top of that oh wow so I have one layer of that and then just the wall underneath and everything's smashed up and yep. pushed in between the panels here. The floor, I think I have uh, an inch of polyiso. Oh, polyiso? Yeah. Can we move to the back? Can you show me kind of the back sure. situation or you want to show me anything else in here? This is a 4.2 cubic feet vitrifugo. 
12 volt and it can also run off 120. You don't have anything in here because you actually only do part time living, I believe, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, you yeah. travel. I'm not going any right now. I just got leftover stuff that was from last time. <laughs> okay, you're like, oh, wait, well, there's stuff in here. Yeah. And also, I wanted to show this, this oh, guy yeah. off right here. Yeah. You got the amp research step. That is a game changer. That is so nice right there. This has the van compass lift. It's the. Uh, for the all-wheel drive they just developed it i basically got the very first one this is so big on the inside like i don't know if you guys saw the headroom that that he had and what i had like i, I think i had like nine inches in there and i'm five eight yeah five nine maybe i doubt that but five eight when i was thinking about doing flares but with this you really don't need them like on a transit to have that much yeah room, i'm six foot and that gives me six four which is plenty of room like it would be nice to have a couple more inches but it's not really necessary now these panels here are they the same panels on your roof or are they different um uh, these are different they actually sell these for like uh, commercial vehicles that you might want to have uh the temperature controlled inside so okay. they're insulated on the back with foam Just shoved a bunch of wool in behind that <laughs> and then screwed it all on there and, it works yeah at some point maybe i'll have them covered in some material or something like that too. uh you also went with uh a lower bed which i found which is kind of cool yeah uh you complete pass through yep i just wanted to have the ability to if i had long things to be able to put them through like if i was ever going to haul something i still could do that and the bed actually comes out really easily Oh, it's on the things that you pop off? Yeah, these are the Ikea rails, eight bucks each or something like that, okay. for these nice steel that yeah, you they... can make any distance that you want. So, I mean, it's perfect. And I use steel, actually bolted, if you want to look under here. Yeah. Uh, it just loops on the edge there. Oh, wow. So all I had to do is install that piece of steel, Yeah. bolt it to the van, and then it just sits right on top of that. So this is uh, the temperature monitoring. It's called uh, Net Atmo, I think. So What's it called? Net, net Atmo. Net Atmo. Yeah, so they sell these things that is a, um, like a weather system for your house so you can see what the temperature is inside and outside and you can see it on your phone anywhere you are. Is it 12 volt? Yeah, it runs on USB. It runs USB, yeah. So yeah, you can plug it into any USB source. And on the phone here, you can actually see the temperature outside, you can see the temperature inside, you can see the CO2. It'll tell you the decibels, so if it's loud. Really? Yeah. And the humidity, so you know what the humidity is inside the van and outside the van. And this was just awesome for our trip because we had two dogs. Yes. During the summer. And we'd want to go out to eat. Okay. But is it too hot in the van? Like, it's Wi-Fi, so it connects up to my Wi-Fi. And you have plenty of that. We all and, know this now. <laughs> and then the app here, it'll connect anywhere that you have internet on your phone. It's just this it's little, a little silver. silver thing. And all I gotta do is plug it in with USB. I'm gonna try and zoom in on that guy over there. It's literally that, that guy right there, guys. There's one more of those under the van. So I just have it screwed under the van there. Yeah. And it takes all the readings and you got it right there. And you can actually remote start the transit with an app on the phone. Yep. So if it ever got too That's through hot, Ford. Yeah, through Ford. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I could start it up and start the air conditioning up and cool it back down in there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So your van your your van is very like minimalist, uh really aesthetically cool, I think. Yeah. And you did not spend a lot. Yeah, I think I maybe spent ten thousand before we're looking at the air conditioning and that kind of thing. Yeah, so, like so you put a little bit more in there. Yeah. But that's it. Like not that much. It did help that you built your own system. I'll give you that much. Yeah, if you can build your own battery, that's going to save you a lot. Doing all the work yourself, too, like, yeah. you know, you I'm, can save a lot there, too. Really stress us enough that eight months was a good good amount of time, and then you, you were working full-time, I presume. Yeah. So you, Well, I mean, it was a, you know, a little during, bit slowed down. Yeah, during but. certain situations. I get it. <laughs> and I've never been, like, a woodworker or anything like that. Really? I just... I got a got saws and I figured everything out on my own. And... <laughs> it's impressive. It really is. Plug anything? I definitely. I'm always down for pl having people plug their stuff. Oh yeah, right on. The company that did the the uh, aluminum work is Basan Metalworks. Basan Metalworks. It's funny. You. I said plug yourself. You're plugging other people. But go right ahead. You're hey, cool. I gotta I give mean, some credit. For you. you know, I'd probably be open to be doing batteries for people or mobile internet solutions. If that's well, how can we find you? Uh, you can look at me on Instagram. I don't really have a business, but maybe I will. I've been really passionate about it, and this is a huge fun thing, and just getting into the community and going to these events and all that sort of thing. Thank you so much for showing us your rig, and sure. I really do like it a lot, man. It's really, really nicely done. Thanks. Appreciate you. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, cool.